Hello everybody, I want to do a quick uh, couple of videos here uh, regarding the ASUS Slate and uh, 3D art packages specifically uh, 3D Studio Max and ZBrush. Uh, I'll go ahead and go into both programs and kind of tool around the, the interface a bit uh, mess around with the tools a little bit and you guys can get an idea of the performance. I've had a couple questions about how I liked it. I love it, but I figured for the price It'd be nice if somebody throws up a video showing the performance so other people who are considering the purchase can take a look and kind of judge for themselves. Uh, real quickly, the ASUS Slate comes in two models. I have the higher end model, which is a 4 gigabyte of memory and a 64 gigabyte solid state drive. They both come with i5 uh, dual core processors and, uh, they, and they use Wacom technology. So this is pressure sensitive, it has a stylus. The video I'm taking will not use a stylus because uh, I want you to see the screen and the performance of the applications, not my big uh, hairy hand. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and launch Max. Uh, 64 gigs is not much for a, hard, for a hard drive, obviously, so I use an external hard drive. The Slate has two USB ports. I have a bigger hard drive attached to the USB port, and then there is an SD card slot here and I use the SD card slot with like a 16 gig card for all my smaller files like uh, Photoshop brushes and ZBrush alphas and stuff like that. Hopefully besides the Max video and the ZBrush video I can throw together some kind of DX shader video uh, though it'll be pretty basic because I don't have any uh, unique shaders installed yet on this. Well, I'm impressed with all of this as far as the performance goes personally. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of work in this yet as far as on in Max or really ZBrush. I work in the games industry and there hasn't been a whole lot of time for me to do that. So, <clears throat> one thing that's nice if you are in an industry that demands a lot of your time as an artist, uh, the slate's pretty awesome because, as you'll see here shortly, um, you can do a lot of what you normally do with this and still be around your family if you have a family. You don't have to go, like I work in a little dungeon or even if it's an office and I'm pretty excluded from the normally when I'm doing my personal work. Uh, this really helps me get around that and I can still interact. Alright, so this scene right now is 567,000 polys. Uh, you know, it, it spins just fine, it seems. So, let me go ahead and grab the cab. <laughs> so, there was the cab, and I'll add a couple polys to it and we'll see what happens. And forgive me, this is definitely not any kind of a modeling tutorial. So, And also I want to throw out a disclaimer. I don't ever do YouTube videos. I don't ever really do videos at all. So if this sucks, or if you think this sucks, you're probably right. But hopefully you guys can put up with it long enough to see if you, uh, if you like the equipment or not. Again, I'm, I'm dead slow on this model because of the weird angle I'm in. Okay, so there's do some kind of little widget there. I guess. One thing that's weird, and I'm guessing this is more a Max 2012 bug, is that when I'm selecting things, I don't have a marquee. Well, I do. It's just kind of my background, but in some cases, I'm not getting my marquee. Like it, it, it cuts real weird through the geometry. Um, I think that's kind of a known issue, though, with 2012. Alright, 
so we'll just, that's fine. Again, not a modeling tutorial. So you see it, it's pretty snappy back, bouncing back into Turbo Smooth. Um, crank it up again. So that was at, prior, that was at about 200,000. Tool was at uh, 290,000 polys. We'll bump it up. And now we're at 1,163,000 polys. And it's still, you know, it's still moving fairly, fairly well. Not a lot of, not a lot of horrible drag in it. Um, definitely can get close in. Sorry, I'm on the wrong camera here. So I can definitely get close in on all the little details and see that there's, you know, nice tight lines. So yeah, so that's it kind of on the modeling side. Um, when I do the whole DX shader thing, I'll show you the UV editor. I'm not going to screw around with that for right now. Alright, so let's exit this. This is more just to show you the performance of it in general. So right now, my entire scene now is at 1,443,000 polys. Now part of this too is, I believe part of this is the crazy cool viewport performance that Max 2012 kind of incorporates. Okay, so I do get a marquee, I just can't see it, so my apologies. <clears throat> Though it does select behind objects sometimes, which is definitely the Max 2012 bug. Alright. So now we're at almost 2 million polys. Still moving fairly well, right? Not the, not a real big uh, noticeable hit, at least, at least in my opinion. This would definitely still be workable. So, and let's just kind of drag out a copy of this. Now, obviously, it would not work like this in general. I would just strictly be using a cage and then prepping this for a ZBrush. Alright, so let's drag out a couple copies. Um, I think copies show off uh, the performance better than instances. It's, it's just a true copy of the Geo, if I understand that all correctly. So now it's beginning to hate life just a little bit more. So yeah, now it's starting to hate life a bit. But we're also at 5 million polys. Okay, and let's just see if we really can't make this thing die. Which we very well can. I haven't actually done a lot of tests like this. And you can see it's starting to definitely lag a bit. So now this is at 10 million polys. All right. So I'm going to turn off wireframe. I actually think for some reason this likes uh, shaded view a little better. Let me just move some of these around a little bit. So yeah, you can see it's definitely not digging this. But it's far from tanking as well. Okay.
so now just to make this even more crazy I'm gonna go ahead and turn on uh, how are we doing on time here I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the realistic shader we'll see what that gives us and now we'll die So, I mean, this is, this being well over 10 million polys, it's actually 10,666,000 polys. Uh, the performance for, for this tablet is still pretty, I mean, I, I'm pretty impressed with it. So let me see if I have, if I dropped any goofy lights in here. If I did, we'll see how they interact when I try to move them around a bit. And I'm being kind of ridiculous because I'm moving around, moving the scene around in this realistic view to begin with. Yes, I do have lights hidden. Okay, so I have some goofy lights in there that don't make any sense. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and step out of this because as you can see there's a fair bit of lag. So let's just try to go back into the shaded mode. All right. So now hopefully I can move my light a little easier. Yeah. Try to put it where I want it to be which I have no real clue of where this is actually sitting in the space. And I want to check one thing real quick. Okay. So as you can see, windows are popping up and down a little slow. Um, it's definitely hating life. But again, this is, you know, this is not even really there's no graphics card in this. This is all using integrated graphics on top of all this. Uh, Intel's HD graphics processor. So, I, for what I would use it for, obviously it, it would be, it's just fine. I wouldn't build a scene this dense with actual geometry. I'd probably prep an object, um, have my high mesh detail in there, uh, prepped and ready to go to ZBrush. So the fact that it'll support as many polys as it will, uh, definitely will be a good thing when I need to bring even a uh, relatively high poly mesh back out of ZBrush into this if I want to bake from this or I can take it into Topo Gun.